Okay, this is part two of the Ensign on the iPad using TeamViewer video. So in this video I'm going to go over a few more in-depth details and show how to use the Ensign 10 uh, as well. So, we're going to turn on the iPad. We're going to go over to the Team Viewer, and this time, before we connect, I'm going to show you how to set up the predefined password. So, the main thing you need to do is in Team Viewer on the computer that you want to use, just click on Extras, and then go to Options, and now in the Options window, you click on the Security tab. Now this top section says predefined password for unattended access. Now for this example, I'm just going to create a password. Um, that's just going to be my name. And I have to confirm that. I can choose the strength. I'm just going to pick a simple one. And then I'm going to hit OK. And now they have the option to either use this number here, which you can randomly create each time if you want somebody else to log on, or if it's for your personal use, you can use the predefined password. And so that's what I'll do here. So now, if I come back down to the iPad, um, and then I type in that same number. Now in here, there's also an option to choose the recents if it's set to remember and you can see that's the same number that I used before and then I just have to enter my password and I'm just going to do for the test my name and then I'm going to do remote control you'll see that it starts the remote and this way I can use my name every time that I want to initiate the remote connection it makes it nice so you don't have to have somebody there logging in for you now if we look back at the screen now, if you remember, you can do the pinch and zoom. Bring in this, the camera just a little bit. Okay. Now, in this example, I'm going to show a few more things here. So, this is Ensign 10. Let's say I want to open up my layout. And I want to come over here and pick the example. Now, if I want to make sure I get the right thing, I can zoom in a little bit more click on example and then hit open and now I can zoom back out so anytime you log on this little window is going to pop up down here and you can simply just bring the mouse down here put it on the side arrow and then tap and that just minimizes the connection now one of the things that's nice about using the Ensign uh, 10 is the ability to do different layers it's a lot easier to switch things so I bring my mouse over here, click on layer 2 for example, and again I can zoom in if I want to make sure I can get right on it. It easily switches between, I can see one chart full screen, um, and I can also switch monitors to see the chart that I have on my other monitor. Now these are the real-time updating charts. You can see the price changing over here. Of course, everything's running natively on the desktop and not locally on the iPad. So it just needs an internet connection to connect to it. And the interface is great to be able to control from an iPad. Switch back and forth. If I want to change the, to the symbols to something different, for example, just bring my tap over, double click, and it loads different charts. You're not going to have this much power on a, an app that runs unless you're using a remote desktop type of a capability. Um, and this is, uh, let me show you a few other settings here. I go to settings. This is where you can control more of the monitor. You can do the resolution. Uh, in the resolution, you know, I like to go with native. It'll just use whatever your desktop has. But if you have an extremely large monitor, you may want to try shrinking it down. Uh, the quality is one as well. Optimize uh, for automatic. Uh, automatic will choose the best. That's always a good one to use. Uh, removing wallpaper, that will also help speed up the connection because it doesn't have to repaint the wallpaper. It just puts a simple color up. 
Uh, remote cursor, let's turn that on. That's kind of a nice feature because you can see if somebody else is controlling it, you can see now my cursor is moving without my finger being there. And so I can see where the cursor is. And then as I take over, the cursor will then follow the iPad control. So that's a that's a nice setting to use as well if you want that one, which I don't right there. So anyway, this is the second segment in the video for Ensign on an iPad.